hit the range uh, of cooperating Hello, hello again, friends and little Wolfpack members, Chaos Wolfin, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. Now, last episode, you'll remember that we went and sent up some escape pods up to the watchtower. The problem is, is that as we found out, they didn't quite work as well as I'd originally intended. If you remember rightly, what happened is, if they're not actually being manned by a pilots then they're just it, it's just impossible to actually control them on the way back so as you can see what I've got done is I'm actually going to jettison them all off yes I'm crazy I know well aware but what we're going to go and do is we're actually going to go and replace them all yep that's right I've actually gone and redesigned them and here we go these are my escape pods mark 2 now, instead of actually having a sunken fuel tank, they've actually got an, well, a dedicated fuel tank on the outside, so these should work. Not only that, but we've actually got a probe controller on each of these, just to allow us to go and point prograde, retrograde, whatever. And not only that, but we actually do have these little thrusters as well, which will allow us to go and rapidly descend down back to Kerbin. So this is going to be interesting to go and see if this is going to work as well as I hope it will. And I've basically just got to put this on to a basic kind of rocket just to go and get them up into the space station. Not only that, but I've actually got to learn an easier way of getting them to their destination. So we're actually going to go and give that a go very soon. So let's just go... Oh. Come on. There we go. Look at that. It looks like a giant lemon attached to the end. That's awesome. But anyway, uh, I do believe I've got all my staging correct. Yes, I have. So let's save and let's launch. What I've learned is that it's going to be a lot easier to go and rendezvous with the watchtower if we just go and do something a little different. So if we're sitting here on the landing pad and we wait for the watchtower, which is in low orbit to come and sit around about here so about there what this means is actually get out of here and whilst that is there what this means is going to be easier to go and make a rendezvous now what we do want to have happen right now is for us to go and get as much speed well not exactly as much speed but we want to start gaining altitude as much as we can right now because I had a couple of practice runs at this and we don't want to go, go quite that fast because we don't want the atmospheric effects coming over the ship because that means that we're actually going to be burning more fuel than we want to be right now. So, there we go. Now, we've slowed down a little bit. We're going 400 meters per second, which is very good. So, what we want to do is we want actually come to think of it what yep i do think we need to start pitching over because we want to start flattening out our angle of ascent really because basically we just want to go and try and catch up with the watchtower Now we have to be very careful right now because I don't really want to go and flip this over too heavily. So here we go. Now we've at, it seems like we've left the main heavy atmosphere. We're basically in the very, very upper stratosphere. So what we can do now is go and move this over as much as we can. Because this is flying at an, well, orbiting an altitude of around about 83 and a half. In fact, actually, let's go and bring that up a little bit more. That should be sufficient. And what we'll be able to do then is go and add a maneuver and try and get an encounter. So let's go and see. Are we going to be able to do this? And there we go, we've almost got an encounter already. In fact, we've almost got two. 
This is, wow, 8.8 .8 kilometers already. Okay, so we've only got a small burn, apparently, that we're needing, but I somehow don't think that's actually what it is. So let's go and see. Can we actually make it so that we can get a very sl small gap here? No, wrong way. But I think that's going to have to do it for now. So let's go and point prograde. Because it's going to ha it's going to definitely be longer than two seconds, which is it's claiming it is now. There we go. Thirty seconds it's going to be. Now, what we're going to do as well is we are going to go into map now, bring this up. And as soon as we get close enough to this, I am actually going to go and cancel this. And go and do the last of it, the last bit, by hand. Because we want to get the separation down as low as we can get it. Now, we've got it down to about 21 kilometers, but we can go and change this a tad more so we can go and fix this right here. So let's go and see what we can do. And after that minor correction burn, we might get this down to 3.6 kilometers. In fact, let's try the RCS. In fact, I don't think that's going to work. Oh, it is working, in fact, as well, because I actually managed to get the separation down even further. But let's go and... There we go. Managed to get the separation down even further. Wow. 0.3 of a kilometer. That's awesome. So there we go. We've actually managed to go and make it. So we've got a very, very nice little separation there. In fact, we're going to go warp here. And we're going to go and point retrograde. You know what? We just have to quickly go and relaunch this ship because I realised I actually forgot to go <laughs> and deploy the solar panels. So we ran out of charge on the way to making our rendezvous. So that wasn't fun. So let's go and do this again. And we'll go and see if we can get a better encounter. And there we go, we've gone and managed to get one of our separations down to 0.6 kilometers. And how much of a burn is that going to be? That's actually going to be very negligible. So let's go and get ourselves pointing to our target. We don't have very long until we have to go and burn. Now we actually launched from about here. And because we waited for the space station to be around about here this actually made our our rendezvous so much easier and i'm glad i actually saw this on a on basically another youtuber's video now the thing is i don't actually remember the name of the youtuber but he was very very good at this and i'm actually quite pleased that i found his channel because you know what i'm just a complete noob at this so far and here we go 15 seconds left to go so let's go and do this. Now that's 0 0.6 we've managed to get that to. Actually, no, that isn't. Separation speed's a little bit more. So let's go and... Ooh, there we go. So let's turn on our RCS and actually reverse thrust a little bit. Look at that, 0.1 on that. That's awesome. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be warping to about here and in order to that we're actually going to go and select target and point retrograde to our target now i don't think we're going to want rcs just yet because this might go and cause us some issues but what we want to do is as soon as we get close enough to the watchtower as soon as it gets close enough to us, we're going to want to go and bleed off as much of our speed as we possibly can. And here we are. Look at that. There's the watchtower coming in very, very nicely. Now, we are going to have to go and bleed off as much of our speed in relation to the watchtower as we can. So, 
So now I'm actually going to be using the RCS to get us down to exactly, basically exactly zero. But there we go, look at that. Now the thing is, we don't actually have to dock anymore. Because all we're doing is we're going to basically, basically go and drop off a bunch of these. And then go and pilot them one, to, one by one to go and basically go and dock with the watchtower. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So we're traveling now at one meter per second. So let's actually go and turn off RCS for the moment. There we go, two meters per second. We still need to go a little bit faster than this. So at this point, we could quite easily be going up to 20 meters per second, but I don't want to use too much anything. To, basically, I don't want to go too quickly. So now it's just time to go and bleed off as much of our speed as we can. And then I'm actually just going to go and fly the, the things over there as they are. So in fact, let's actually go quickly check how much mono propellant is in these ones. They should be enough. So what I'm actually just going to go and do is just decouple all of the, a bunch of these. And here we go and just start working our way towards. So I think I'm going to have to go and do this for all of these. Because now, look at this, we can actually control these without needing anything else. So RCS, fly over. And we should, quite easily, be able to go and dock these over with the watchtower. And there we go, that is one of them docked. Now unfortunately we have very, very little monopropellant in each of these. We have to be very, very careful. In fact, I've already lost one on the way over. Now what we're going to have to do is actually go and refill as many of these monopropellant tanks as we can. We don't need much in order to get over there, but we do need some. So that's those two refilled. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go and decouple you. And that is you there. Now I can see that the station actually has some oscillation at the moment. Now that's a bit of a problem, but it's not a lot we can do at the moment about it. So we've got to set one of these as a target and hopefully we should be able to go and dock quite easily. So we've got the target set. All we need to do now is just get a bit closer. Now just look at this oscillation. I really don't like this. Now what this is, the reason this is because we've got a very small docking port. That's actually a docking port junior. So like I said, this isn't perfect, but it's as good as we're going to get. Now, right now, we are heading the right way, but we're having the wrong orientation. So, what we're going to have to do is basically... Oh, there we go. Turn that off. And there we go. We've got two of them on. Unfortunately, I've actually got a lost two as well. <laughs> so, what we're going to go and do it now is we're actually going to go and continue and get the rest of these attached. Now, hopefully, we're not wandering too far away from our target. Now, one of the things I've realized about this is that I've only put two RCS thrusters on these. And that's actually making this a little bit more difficult to control. Now, yes, I can actually go and rotate and do whatever, but that's not the point. The problem I'm having is a sec. I'm gonna to have to turn this back on because we need to go and slow ourselves down. So prograde. And about now we're gonna to have to go and slow ourselves down to about zero. There we go, that's perfect. So what I'm having to do is turn on the RCS every so often. And go and Oh, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. And actually flip this around a tad. Now it looks like 
we are going to have to go a little bit forward. Oh, wrong way. I didn't realize, but the station itself is actually rotating. So let's go and turn on the, assay, uh, the stability assist back on. Now, is this the right one? No, this is the one we're after. So let's just go and work out which way is which again. Now, hopefully, we should go and dock with that one any second. Oops. What I need to do is actually rotate this sideways. All the way around, actually. About there. There we go. There we go. That's getting a lot easier. And there we go. That's all but the two I went and lost. Because you can see one there. And another one there. Actually, no, that's just that's just a ship. What is this one? That's just the other escape. I wonder if we can actually go and recapture that one, in fact. In fact, you know what? I don't really care. Then again, come to think of it. Then again, we've run out of electrical charge as well, so there's no chance in hell of getting this back. So, oh well, whatever. Let's go and see if we can go and deorbit this. Because I built it, so we're supposed to be able to. The problem is, is I'm not sure if we have enough fuel or monopropellant in order to do it. So, let's go and see. So here we go, pointing retrograde to orbit. Let's go and see if we can actually go and... Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah, that is in fact going to be a lot more drastic than I was thinking it was going to be. So let's go and retract our solar panels. And let's go and see just how long it's going to take us to get back into re-entry. So it seems this is us for re-entry. Oh, wow. And I can't even do anything. Uh, can I even go? No, I can't deploy the chutes even. Hmm. Okay. So let's go and see just how badly this is going to go. The question is, is this actually going to go and break up on the way down? Because what I was supposed to do is actually go and get this through... Through re-entry, just like this. And then we were supposed to go and deploy the parachutes. Now, I'm not sure if I can do that. We don't have any electric charge, so I suspect we're fresh out of luck for this. Yep, no, I can't go and deploy the chutes. That's annoying. Oh, well. I guess we're just going to have to watch it go and crash then, aren't we? Because this was supposed to go and land. Well, not land. It was supposed to go and just parachute down all nice. Wow. Look at them physics. <laughs> well, we got some of it back at least. Not all of it, but some of it. All right, okay. So let's recover the vessel. Well, note to self, it would be really nice to go and actually add some more, well, some more battery power to it. Do we actually have any more debris? <laughs> Lots of debris. So let's recover as much of this as we can. Well, according to this, we've actually gone and started construction on our first station around Kerbin. We started that a while ago, so why is that only now gone and actually shown up? But, oh well, it's three science and 28,800 credits. So I'm actually more than happy for that. Oh, and also six rep. So that's going to be nice. Now, let's go and get over to the watchtower itself. Right, so back on the watchtower. And we've got our new escape pods all nice and ready to go. Now, what I'm going to need to do potentially is actually go and just go and refuel 
all of these tanks because they're just going to need it right now. Now, thankfully, we have more than enough mono propellant to go around. Now, in case you're not quite sure how to go and do this, what you need to do is hold Alt and right click one of your mono propellant tanks, then click something else with the mono propellant in it. And you can actually then go and choose which one you want to go and take it out of, which one you want to go and take it into. There we go. Now, I suspect we may be able to do this with multiple at once, because there we go. And we can select in on the command pod, and that is going to completely refuel the mono propellant from that. So that's going to be great when we want to go and uh, deorbit. So now we have most of the new Mark II escape pods on the station, so that's awesome. And what we're going to go and do is we're going to go and point prograde, and we're going to go and check how much science we've got on here. Not a lot. Because every so often I do pop up here and I actually do transfer it back. Now, what I don't want to be doing is accidentally pressing the space bar while doing anything here. Because we do also have our liquid fuel, so that's going to be very nice to have. Hmm. Do we have any more science here and now? I don't believe we do. No, we don't have anything else. Oh, well. Now, as you may have noticed, I've actually earned a good amount of money here. I'm actually on one point, well, one and a quarter million. Now, all I've really been doing is going into the mission area, uh, basically the mission control, and I've been finding some really easy missions to go and do. So that's all we've, all I've really been doing, like uh, testing certain things f from the landing pads or on splashdown or in the air or whatever. And I've gone and put two relay satellites out there because I had missions for those as well. Now, right now, we've got a bunch of other missions. We've got Explore Duna, which I want to go and do very soon. But what I also want to go and do is I want to go and build a station around the moon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and build a single stage station to go out there. Because, as we can see, we've basically got to go and support seven Kerbals. We've got to go and have a research lab on there, two scientists in the station, and maintain stability, and that's it. So that's all we've got to go and do. But we also actually have to have an antenna and a docking port and be able to generate power. That's all easy enough. So basically, all we're really going to go and do is basically send up the Watchtower Mark II up there, which is going to be basically the same thing, but we're not going to be using any of the junior docking ports. Now, I don't want to go and expand on that station all that much, but I am going to be able, I'm going to be leaving the option there to go and do this. So that's what we're going to be going and doing next episode. Now, I suspect this is going to take a good amount of money to go and get that up there, but what I'm happy about is we actually have a bunch of missions. We've got to go and rescue someone from the orbit of the moon. We've also got to go and build a station around the moon, get some data from around the moon, and plant a flag on the moon. So that's a lot of things that we're going to be able to go and do. Now, what I want to do is also have a lander to go and be attached to the station. And potentially actually go and send up a rover as well. So this is going to be somewhat interesting in what, how we're going to be able to pull this off. So how are we going to go and do this? I'm not 100% certain as yet, but as you can see, we've actually gone and unlocked a few more items so that we can actually go and make this a little easier. We've got bigger fairings, inline clampatrons, and we've even got uh, more support and structural items, which is going to be very nice to have. Now, the thing is, what I want to go and do is, as soon as I get enough science, I want to go and get some more scanning tech. Not only that, but because I'm not sure which one I want to go for, really. Whether I want to have the, uh, the double C seismic accelerometer, or whether I want to go and have these ones. I know these two are basically for finding ore deposits, but this one's actually for scanning... Um, what's what I'm looking for? That's This one is for scanning atmospheres. So that's going to be nice. The only thing is, this is only going to work around Kerbin and some other stations in the local area. So this is going to be interesting, what we're going to go and have. 
<sighs> I mean, more power would be nice, but we don't need that just yet. I want this, and I also want uh, meta materials because I want to go and start building better space stations. I want the ma the hub, and I, but what I really want is the docking port junior, sorry, senior even, because this one is the most stable, and it's going to help to be able to make stations and bases without as much swaying. So that'd be great. I mean, maybe we'll also go and make a base on the moon. We'll have to go and see. But that's going to be it for this episode. I do hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been a little bit iffy. I mean, it was a bit of a learning curve trying to actually send up those escape pods and ended up having two of them go and run out of mono propellant on the way to the space station because I forgot to go and refuel them. But oh well, it's a bit of a mistake. But you know what they say, through mistakes, we actually learn to progress. So anyway, guys... Thank you very much for watching. I've been Commander Chaos Wolf from Sci-Fi Gaming. You guys, as always, have been epic. I will see you soon. And until next time, my fellow Kerbalnauts, keep flying and stay shiny.